fewer asses first, but do you think that this year-long study is too slow, not fast enough, given your interest in doing something in the authorization bill this year? Well, we can have a moratorium in the bill, which is consistent with that study. Obviously, I'd like to see this resolved before that year, and then there's another year after that, which Secretary Gates said might be required even after the first year, as I, if I heard him right. So I'd like to see it happen earlier, but if there were a moratorium on it, uh, then the uh, what I consider to be a slow pace uh, then would be more uh, practical, more fair. So have you, have, you, have, you, have, you, have you ruled out actual repeal then in the I DOD office? Lee Patterson, Canadian TV. Can you please comment on American and Canadian forces fighting side by side despite this don't ask, don't help policy? Well, we were told what I believe also, which is the Canadian um, approach, which is not to discriminate against gays and lesbians serving openly. It has not provided any problem either to Canadian forces or created any problem to other coalition forces like ours that fight side by side with Canadians. That's what we heard this morning. That's my own belief. Uh, as well. And you think it's a good model perhaps for the Americans? This frequently happens. The Canadians have very good models for us. Except in terms of Robin Kennedy. Do you, do you intend on inserting a, a repeal I'm into the sure. defense authorization bill? I don't want to, I don't know what we're going to be able to proceed with um, until our hearings are completed. We'll have a hearing a week from Tuesday, a week from Thursday. With an outside panel, we have all of our service chiefs and secretaries coming in during February. I'm sure they're going to be asked about it. Uh, there's a number of options, including a moratorium, which makes a lot of sense to me. Since this policy is not only under review, there's been a decision make which the secretary supports, which our chairman of the Joint Chiefs personally supports, uh, to make a change in the policy. Since we know there's going to be that kind of momentum, why not have a moratorium pending the outcome? That's my strikes me at the moment. Has, that, has President is Obama the, given you? It? Is the is the bill the place to make that kind of decision? No, well, it's, it's the Defense Authorization Act, I believe, which had put the policy in place to begin with. So it's so it is a total. consideration to put it into that bill. If, if and oh yeah, it's a perfectly appropriate place to put in either a moratorium or a repeal or some other uh, action relative to don't ask, don't tell. Has President Obama indicated what he would prefer versus you know full repeal versus a moratorium? I don't know anything other than what he said in his speech. And would this study that they've proposed, one that includes service members and their families, yes. but not, um, say, the partners of gay service members, would that be st uh, statistically significant to, to do a study like that? Uh, try me again. Well, if you're having a study like this that's taking into account the opinions of service members um, and their families, it wouldn't then include the, the opinions of necessarily gay service members and their partners, would it? Um, I think you have to you have to obtain the opinion of gay service members. How do you do that if they're not allowed to? Uh, that's the question Senator McCaskill raised. So you'd have to either um, look at ones who have been separated or voluntarily resigned and talk to them as former service members, or. You'd have to uh, have, I assume, everybody would agree, and I can't imagine any of my colleagues, even those who favor the don't ask, don't tell policy, would not agree to a uh, request from a, somebody to talk to a current gay member. I mean, if that's in response to a question, by particularly uh, by somebody who's authorized to ask the question, I think everybody would agree that that opinion should be solicited and should not be penalized in any way. But it, it, that it, she raises a very significant point, um, and it's a point which would need to be addressed in any survey that's, uh, that is an accurate survey. You'd have to be able to talk to the broad cross section of people. Were you surprised by Mullen's comment? I had in a previous conversation with him. An indication that that was his personal belief. It's a very strong belief in integrity and not allowing people to be themselves, and that integrity is the nature of our army and our armed forces. That people want integrity there and respect integrity and they're not requiring people to pretend that they're something other than they are. And so I wasn't surprised by it. I also, uh, in general, I 
uh, have come to rely on Admiral Mullen as somebody who will uh, give you his personal opinion straight. And it's a very valuable, it's not only a valuable source of information, it's required by our Constitution and by our rules when he's confirmed. We ask men and women who are confirmed before us, point blank, and you've been around here long enough to know, one of those 12 questions, will you tell this committee your personal opinion, regardless of whether it's in agreement with the administration in power, when asked by this committee, they say they will do that. He did that this morning, and uh, he showed some real exemplary leadership this morning, and I thought when a colleague was critical of his testimony in suggesting that this, this would represent undue command influence, I thought was really way off target. I thought that was just, it just was, I thought, inconsistent with everything that uh, uh, we require of our uh, military. How Senator, important is his voice going to be in this debate, do you think, as a uniform military? His leadership is, is very important as to how this gets done. Is a repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell by Congress out of the question for this year? I think what's more likely than repeal, I'm guessing, but we have to await the testimony that we're going to have, is, is a moratorium. I think is a probably a more likely prospect uh, because of the study which the secretary announced today. But I don't want to preclude anything or predict anything. I, I don't know. I mean, people have to be heard from. And, and Senator, is the I defense there's... authorization bill the vehicle uh, for a perfectly uh, appropriate vehicle to act if the Congress wants to act? What about Santa Mon? Uh, you, you can do it either way. I mean, this it's perfectly appropriate to put in a defense authorization bill changes relative to don't ask, don't tell. In fact, my memory is right, and it may not be. Uh, that's where the policy was put into place to begin with. So it's surely appropriate to modify it or repeal it or have a moratorium or do any other number of things that are possible. Sir, I just hope there's no delay. My name's Lieutenant Choi, and I was listening for that entire hearing. I just want to serve, and I hope that I don't have to be fired within the time that this hearing takes yeah, place. Well, we followed your career and uh, Appreciate have it. admired it. You know, Senator Levin, you know, Bill Clinton spoke at Night Roots Nation and said that when he tried to implement Don't Ask, Don't Tell last time, the mid-level officers refused to implement it as it was promised to him. Colin Powell told him that gays would be allowed to go to gay bars, they'd be allowed to march in gay parades. As long as they didn't come out in base, on base in their official capacity, they would be prosecuted. Clinton said he was betrayed on it because mid-level, largely evangelical officers would not promote gays. I'd have to see the testimony of the statements. I'm not going to comment on it. It's too, too third-hand for me. I, I'd have to see the, what he actually said. Sir, Sir I have one quick question for you. Um, Try that again, a little slower. <laughs> You tell me a little about the schedule for how you see the Senate Armed Services Committee is going to continue with this issue. The schedule? Yes. We're going to have a hearing uh, outside panels a week from Thursday. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear from our secretaries, service secretaries, and service chiefs during the month of February on their budgets. Mm -hmm. And so during those budget hearings, I'm sure there'll be an opportunity for colleagues to ask them and they'll expect to be asked their position. Uh, on the president's approach and what uh, Secretary Gates announced here today. So there will be a lot of activity on this subject during February. And uh, in, this, in this hearing a week from Thursday, uh, who will be the witnesses? I don't think we finally decided. We're going to try to get a cross-section. Okay. Thanks.